guys so today's topic of discussion is on direct filingo so this material was said to be used as a restorative material in england even in the 15th century so it was introduced to united states of america by the first dentist in usa dr robert wolfendale on his return to the usa from england so what made this material such an excellent one so being a noble metal it does not undergo any tarnish or corrosion and in the pure form gold was soft so it enabled its excellent workability it was malleable and it could be cold welded so with the invent of amalgam and more aesthetic materials like composite this material is not as widely used today as it was before so what are the scenarios where it can be used so it can be used in a class restoration which is small or a pit and fissure lesion it can be used to repel the cast margins of any cast restoration especially in a gold restoration now it can be used in a class 2 class 5 or class 4 where it has to withstand a lot of stress and it can be used to repair a gold crown following any damage or root canal therapy rather than making a new crown which is more expensive we can just repair it with a dfg without compromising its uh, strength or stability much so now where all it cannot be used now so it cannot be used in a young permanent teeth where there is large pulp chamber so gold restorations require extensive preparations like similar to that of an amalgam so in such a case the preparation can actually cause the exposure of the pulp now this material actually requires a lot of compaction force so it is packed really well into the refined cavity so a severely periodontally weakened tooth or a root canal fill teeth which is brittle cannot actually withstand it it may undergo fracture it just come out now in a handicap patient the problem faced is that they cannot tolerate the long appointment times that such a restoration requires so in these scenarios this material is not preferred as a restoration now what all are the types of restorative like gold filling materials so it can be a foil or fibrous gold like it can be sheets like cohesive or non cohesive it can be in the form of a rope cylinder it can be laminates or it can be platinized next it can be a granulated gold it's like a powdered gold or an encapsulated powder now it can be an electrolytic precipitate or it can be crystalline gold which is further divided into matte matte foil or a gold calcium alloy so among this most of the types they are made of like 99.9 percent each pure gold except platinized and gold calcium alloy which is not pure pure gold so first let's see what is a gold foil so how gold foil is made is that you will take a 15 mm thick cast gold ingot you'll beat it into sub microscopic sheets or gold foils so 15 to 25 micrometer thickness now when they're beaten up the crystals of the gold they become deformed and elongated so this gives rise to fibrous structure giving gold foil it's another name that is fibrous gold so this gold it can be available in the form of a flat square sheets it can be in the form of pellets or cylinders which is just formed by cutting or ro- rolling the sheets then it can be preformed pellets or cylinders or it can be laminated foil so the sheets they are available as number 4 and number 3 so number 4 it is of like 0.259 g weight and 0.51 microgram thickness number 3 on the other hand is smaller so it can be 0.194 g weight and 0.38 microgram thickness so the preform foiler cylinder what they the pellet or the cylinder it is rolled and it is cut into desired size now the properties of such a material can be increased by corrugating or carbonizing a number 4 gold foil so what is done is that the foil is taken it is kept or sandwiched between two paper sheets and it is ignited in a closed chamber this is said to confer the gold better properties so what is a platinized foil or a laminated foil so let's see what's a laminated gold foil first so a sh- number of sheets of gold foil it is placed on top of each other and then beaten into a single foil sheet so it's just like more thickness and it's stronger 
An example of laminated gold foil is platinized gold foil. So in this, a platinum foil is sandwiched between two number four gold foil. It is beaten up into a single foil sheet. So this is called as a platinized foil and the presence or addition of gold uh, with platinum, it increases the hardness of the restoration. Now, this is available only in number four sheet form. Now, there are two types of uh, gold sheets. That is, it can be a cohesive gold or a non-cohesive gold. So, cohesive gold is the form of gold that is free from any impurities. It's to facilitate the gold, like cold welding of gold. Now, gold as such has the ability or the property to attract gases or impurities on its surface. Now, this thing actually prevents the adhesion of individual increments of gold when compaction is done. Now, but this property is said to have some um, advantages in the fact that sometimes before compaction, uh, these pure golds, they tend to aggregate with each other. So, it is undesirable because it prevents its further compaction. So, the manufacturer actually absorbs certain impurities like ammonia, which is most commonly used, iron salt, acid gases, which can be either phosphorus or sulfur containing gases on the surface to gold to produce an impure form that is non-cohesive gold. Now, this film can be reverted back to the normal cohesive gold by heating it to a particular temperature. Now, this non-cohesive gold is rarely used nowadays, but when used, it is used to build the bulk of the restoration. Now, electrolytic precipitate. So, here, the crystalline gold powder is formed by electrolytic precipitate. Now, the material has dendritic crystalline structure. Now, these are heated at a fusion temperature, high temperature below its melting point and causes aggregation of the gold material giving a precipitate this like i discussed before it's of three types matte gold matte foil and alloyed form so what is matte gold so matte gold is electrolytic precipitated gold which is sandwiched between sheets of foil then it is made cut into strips and then of desired length this is used to build up the bulk of the restoration then it can be easily compacted and again another good property is that it can be easily adapted to the cavity. But the main problem is that this forms a lot of voids when it's compacted into the refined cavity. So on the surface there is a veneering of gold foil that is done to prevent any damage or any irregularities on the surface because of this void formation. This problem was overcome by matte foil. So this was actually a sandwiched electrolytically precipitated gold between two number three foil sheets. So this thing was then sintered and cut into strips. Here there is no veneering with foil done because it already has number three foil which is thinner and more like less denser. So it just goes into even the nook and crook of the cavity. Last one is the alloyed electrolyte precipitate which is gold alloyed with 0.1 percentage of calcium. This is also called as an electrolyte RV. So here the alloy is sandwiched between two foils of uh, gold. Now what is the advantage of adding calcium to this? So it increases the strength and the hardness of the material. Next the last type of gold is powdered gold or granular gold. This here um, the fine powder is formed by chemical precipitation or by atomizing the metal. Here, the average size of the particle is around 15 micrometer and the pellets, they have a tendency to disintegrate into agglomerates. That is, it has a tendency to just stick up to each other. So, what they do is that they'll mix the gold with soft wax like 0.01 percentage of organic wax and then they'll wrap it around gold foil number three. There is no sintering, no heating, nothing. It is just wrapped around. Now, what this foil and this wax allows it to remain in the powdered form during condensation. Now, the pellets during compaction, what they do is before it is kept inside, it's just heated so that the wax just is removed and then it is kept inside the cavity. 
I really hope that you found this video helpful and informative. So if you have any queries or you felt like any topic is not explained properly, please don't hesitate to send us a comment in the comment box or you can send us a DM in our Instagram page cracking.den underscore edu.redefine. Please keep in touch and stay safe. Have a nice day.